Good morning. Friends, in the previous lecture, we talked about the various ways as how to plan for writing an effective resume or for drafting an effective resume. And you remember well, while I said that a resume should tell no doubt, but more than telling, it should actually sell, meaning thereby through your resume, you are selling yourself. You are describing, but then you are not going to provide them a sort of autobiography. Now, when you have understood the various requirements of a resume, let us see how to draft an effective resume. We have already talked about the length and if you remember well, an effective resume, especially for entry level youngsters who are applying for jobs should be from 1 or between 1 to 1 1.5 typed pages. Now, the question that might be haunting you is how to make your resume effective, how to start, how to develop and how to close. Because every resume like every letter will have three parts. The first will be an opening, then the body and then the close. Now, when we talk about an effective resume, the point where I stopped in the previous lecture was to understand what were the several do's and don'ts for us to know before we drafted a resume. Now, many people are not clear about their objective statement. What do I mean by objective statement? An objective statement in a resume, the objective statement will begin just after the heading. So, the objective statement, which in many cases they call summary or in some cases they call objective. So, this objective statement should be one to three line sentence summary of your area of expertise and career interest. Now, here you need to write the complete sentence having some phrases, but in terms of providing phrases, please see that they are very focused, very specific and it is here that in your objective statement, you are going to tell the recruiters about the skills that you have. But as I said, I will repeat, do not say everything in your resume, leave something for the interview because a resume is only a passport and when you appear at the interview, you can further expand whatever you want to say depending upon the nature of questions put to you. Demonstrate what you can do for the company rather than what they can do for you. Now, when you are going to write the objective statement, it is better to avoid the use of generalize the statement. We had provided an example in the previous lecture. When we talk about the generalized statement, you know everyone, every individual cannot be a fit in all jobs. He can be a misfit also. So, what happens if we feel that we have to have a job, we apply and when you apply, you actually mention something which is in a very generalized way and of course, you lose the chance because the recruiters are looking for specific skills. Suppose if somebody says a position 
allowing me to utilize my knowledge in different areas. Now the question remains, what different areas, what different disciplines? So it is actually needed to be specific and say a position where I can gain experience in working on biological problems, in working uh, on Lenox and something else. So you have to be very specific, make your career objective specific. Say for example, a position which can allow me to apply my background in engineering and high performance computing to biological problems. Now this will even be more specific than you talk about only computing. Again, if you are say applying for a job in management, you can mention a marketing position with an opportunity for eventual managerial status. You can also say requiring strong customer contact skills, meaning thereby you want a position in HRM. Next comes education and as I had said in the previous lecture, you have to mention about your educational background in a very systematic manner. So when I say systematic manner, the latest one should come first here. Suppose somebody is a masters, so he should mention uh, about his masters first and then BTEC. Somebody who is only a graduate, so should mention only from uh, his graduation as you can see here, fine. And moreover, you should also remember what you are going to say in terms of your grade or CGPA. Please mention whatever is allowed or whatever is there on your marks file. If your institute follows CGPA, please do mention CGPA or if it follows only percentage, mention percentage as you can see here and then now comes certain other things which you possess more than other candidates because you are actually going to stand out from others only then your resume can be considered. That is why somebody having uh, the experience of or having a course which he undertook when he was in graduation, he took a course in German, in French. So that is a sort of additional qualification which the recruiters will be looking forward to Somebody knows uh, more apart from his discipline, he has also got uh, some sort of skills in computers, say, uh, say programming languages. Somebody has got a niche for speaking English effectively. Somebody knows business law, somebody has done a course on ethics. So these actually are going to make you stand out. But remember, a word of caution here that something that you do not have should not be mentioned at all. Please include those things, those courses which you have taken in addition to moreover while doing so as it is seen especially the youngsters one, they mention the course title and not the name. Suppose if you mention HS001 and do not mention the course title. Now, recruiters are not able to understand what is this HS001 or 002. So, it is better to mention specifically the name of the course. Moreover, if you have some more special skills, please do mention because that actually makes you stand out from the other candidates. Then comes the employment experience. Of course, you if applying for an entry level position will not have experience, but then you can have sought experiences. Somebody may have an internship for two months, somebody may have uh, practice school experience, somebody may have some experience uh, which he or she might have gathered as a project in some organizations even for a brief period. So that has to be mentioned. You must include positions if you have held in any capacity and that is related to the 
job that you are looking for. Be creative by describing and emphasizing your experience in the most relevant way possible. And while doing so, please see to it that you are writing with the help of action verbs or action words. Say, if I have to say got, if I have to say help, these words are actually weak words. So, in terms of help, it is better to use assisted. Somebody says justifies, it is better to say demonstrate. I mean, these are some of the words. Uh, somebody can also say supervised, somebody can say coordinated. These are action phrases or action words that actually matter a lot when you are drafting a resume. Action phrases, because you know, as an entry level uh, person applying for a job, you do not have much to say. So, these things, say for example, organized a debate during Cognizance 2017, conducted a workshop, represented the college team in volleyball. Now, all these things, they actually go a long way to make you stand out of others. Employers do not want only a person, but they want a person with certain attributes which can make them outshine others. Suppose somebody did an intern, so that internship has to be mentioned, but remember that has to have a sort of real experience because whatever you mention here, they some way or the other are to be queried during the time of your interview, my dear friend. Hence, you have to be very particular. Say here the candidate did uh, an internship uh, in a hospital. So, he or she may mention hospitality intern, but while doing so, please mention the exact dates and the place from where you did it. Now, again, you should, when you are drafting your resume, you should actually be clear about the parallelism that we have talked about in several of our lectures. Now, what do we mean by parallelism? Because you know, here in a resume, you cannot write sentences alone. And you know, if you write sentences, the sentences may be longer. So, you are going to sort out, you are going to make them shorten by using action words as you can say, oversaw the planning, production, preparation and prompt delivery of food. Now, you will find the word oversaw and again, if you are going to mention something, now here you have mentioned something as a sort of unit. But if the other sentence that you are going to choose and if it is a complete sentence and you begin a sentence with something else, that will not be in tune with the parallelism. So, parallelism is if you are using verbs, use verbs as you can see here, oversaw the planning, assisted in training and development and retaining, created a positive, demonstrated, supervised, coordinated. So, now in all these, you can find that these are the examples of parallelism which you can also try when you are going to write a resume. Now comes uh, the section of activities. As a student, you might have got chances to make yourself busy or to involve yourself in certain activities. Now, these activities may always not be paid, you know, especially uh, experienced people, they get several chances. But you as a student, you as an entry level person, you also get some opportunities. And in, in many organizations, uh, in many institutes, uh, it is seen that students are also involved because in order to make them develop, 
a hundred percent personality or a proper growth of their personality, they are actually required to take part in these activities. In some of the activities you act as volunteers, in some you act as a representative in some of the projects. There are also times when you get some awards. So, these also have to be mentioned in your resume to make yourself stand a better chance as compared to others. Then some, some students also get a chance uh, to visit some other countries on fellowships. Now, once again, you will find that these carry weight to your resume and that is why they should be mentioned. Please include relevant activities and honors which you could discuss with your prospective employer at the time of interview. And you know, when you mention these things, naturally the questions some way or the other will be in from these areas and that will uh, help you better. If you have certain specialized skills as we talked about in the previous lecture, so include those skills which actually make you unique which make you stand out. For example, somebody knows two foreign languages, German and French. Naturally, his chances in a multinational organization will be better than those who are simply confined to English and Hindi. Suppose somebody has also an experience of social service. Somebody has also an experience of NSS activities. So, we, we find out from them, we derive from them that he can go an extra mile. Somebody who also thinks about the welfare, because in many organizations you will find uh, that they have uh, certain welfare action sections, uh, they have actually the centers of well-being and all. Now, if all these things are there, why can't you stand a chance if you are having these qualities? When you are mentioning these special skills, please be specific. Uh, if you know a particular program, C++, somebody knows Oracle, somebody knows uh, something more in advanced computers and all. So, that has to be mentioned by name huh? so, because they actually help you have an edge over others. If you have done a course, please do mention what was the duration of the course uh, or what, was, what were the dates of those course or if any service that you have rendered that also should be mentioned. When it comes to references as I said in the previous lecture, it is better not to mention the name of referees unless and until asked for. You can always say references available upon request. But some organizations see to it that you mention referees. So, in that case they will make it compulsory or uh, they, they might have given uh, these instructions and it is better that you mention professional references and not people references, professional references. Say uh, your uh, professor, your say project in charge, your head under whom you did one training. So, they can provide better inputs. So, please mention professional references than people references and employers and professors, employers in case you are an experienced one. So, they can provide a uh, better input about you. So, mention uh, referees, but while mentioning referees, please see to it that when you mention them, you provide the exact details, meaning thereby their complete address, their phone numbers, their URLs, because at any point of time, these referees can be contacted. Some organizations, they actually provide you a performer and some straight away write to the referees. But remember, if you have put somebody's name as a referee, please tell them in advance and if it is possible, please send them your resume or tell them about the work, tell them about the company you are applying. Because at times it has been seen that you provide somebody's name as a referee and he or she does not know. Because you know if you put some, some professor's name 
and you have not been in touch with the professor for a long time. So, you are actually putting yourself into problem. So, you need to understand how important it is and that is why I advise you to be in touch with the person and provide him with uh, the information because at any point of time he is consulted, he will provide them the proper input. Now, when we have understood about a resume, it is time that we should also know what actually is an application letter because you cannot if you are applying uh, for a job and you have got this information from the job search either of a national daily or from a website or whatsoever, you also need to attach an application to your resume an application to your resume. Now, the question that may haunt many of you is what actually is an application here? Though we have talked uh, a lot about business letters, so here this application is also much like a business letter and this application can also be called a sort of covering letter because when you know people do not have time to go through your resume first you are also giving them some impression, some information through your covering letter. The main purpose of the covering letter is to attract employers to read your resume. On, a, on one page covering letter, if you have provided in a very subtle and discreet manner some of your skills, naturally the employer is attracted and the employer wants to know and and then he will be interested to go through your resume. If people do not go through our resume, how can they know what we are? But then when you are writing this covering letter, make it sought. It is as the term itself can suggest, it is a covering letter. So use it as a cover letter and let there be short paragraphs and specially uh, it is better if it is confined only to three paragraphs. Now, what are the things that should be there in the covering letter? In any covering letter, you have to express your interest and your qualification for a position for a prospective employer, but it is not like a routine letter that you are writing. You are actually to frame it in such a manner that in the very first paragraph, you have attracted the employer. So, through this uh, covering letter, you are selling your qualification to the prospective employer. But when you are writing that, the first thing that you need to be cautious about is to write the header. By header, I mean to the person that you are writing, you should write exactly his name, address, whatsoever. And then the introductory paragraph, as we have discussed, it is much like a sales letter. In a sales letter, what you do? You actually follow the IDA technique, you attract. So, here also in the very first paragraph, you are going to get the reader's attention, stimulate uh, the interest in the first paragraph and then you are ju to justify your suitability or your claim for the position that you have applied. Here you can mention your qualifications, but in a very clever and subtle manner uh, and throughout the letter, there should be a sort of consistence. How? You also should mention the source from where you could learn about this advertisement. For example, if you frame your paragraph like this, I believe that my knowledge of public relations and my proven communication and leadership skills make me a strong candidate for the position of media relations coordinator posted by such and such organizations. Now, you see the language here, the language is in such a subtle manner that in the very first paragraph, you have already mentioned the qualities that you have, you have mentioned the skills that you have, your leadership skills and your proven communication skills. Naturally, uh, the employer uh, will feel interested. So, you are going to gain the reader's attention in the very first paragraph and then you can in certain cases, you know, but remember you can change the style. 
for example you can say as the member of the fastest growing publishing houses in the world do you have an opening for a fresh graduate in communications or in computers or a graduate with honors or major in english uh, for the post of uh, a sub editor now this also can be now you will find that in the very first paragraph you are going to clarify to them that you possess these skills in the remaining paragraphs as i said you you must confine your covering letter to three paragraphs so the second paragraph which will formulate the body of the paragraph you are going to strengthen you are going to support your candidature uh, by talking about the position you are applying you should also mention if you have a little bit of experience you can also support uh, you have an experience in that area uh, of two year uh, for two years or whatsoever and it is better to refer employers to your enclosed resume i mean there has to be a sort of connectivity between what you are saying in the resume because this this covering letter is a sort of inducement for the employers so that they may go through your resume that is why i have been telling time and again don't write everything in the uh, covering letter but please connect it to your resume so that he feels uh, he is tempted to go through your resume now when you detail your experience uh, don't tell employers your qualifications but so by so i mean you have to give some example how you 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 can say if you have some experience you can say how as a customer representative or how as a banking representative uh, you could help in doing whatsoever for example here you can have a look as a banking representative at such and such bank i provided quality service while promoting the sale of products to customers i also handle upwards of rupees such and such a day so here you are to mention and but that should have a speck of truth no that should have a grain of truth for responsible and i was responsible for balancing the bank's atm machine now through this you are justifying your claims for the position you have applied and then comes the use of language as i have been saying you should use language in a very active manner whether you are describing your experience your activities if if you are talking about something that you did in the past please make use of past tense and if you are doing some responsibilities uh, some accomplishments presently use it in the present at times it has been seen that there is uh, no proper balance between the past and the present and of course if there is no balance between past and present future will be gloom so my dear friends you are actually to mention you are to see that you are balancing your past and present in order to have a delightful and a beautiful future be specific uh, while making or while describing list amounts or figures whatever is applicable in your organizations and then when you are using language don't give a sort of generalized statement for example i attempted to attract customers is a very weak one you could rather say i initiated a program to att attract customers to pizza hut which resulted in a 10% increase now by going in this way you are making your claims more specific you are doing it better it is always advisable to make use of strong words accent words than weak phrases weak verbs as tried helped and attempted please see that you are not going to use gender biased language it is always better to use language such as chairperson instead of chairman fine so you have to be free from the technical jargons as well in certain cases a language that is considered to be better is free from the technical jargons cliches redundant expressions as we have discussed while talking about reports style and when you have done all this please organize your letter 
and and it is always better to ensure that you have double checked so that there are no errors organize the body paragraphs and to uh, to emphasize upon the strongest and the relevant qualifications and then include one or two strongest qualifications but see to it that your covering letter is no longer than one page make it easy to uh, easy to read especially by the employers because nowadays as i said earlier they believe in a resume that can be scanned they believe in a letter that can be scanned so uh, allow it to be scannable by beginning each paragraph with a topic sentence and when you conclude so the concluding lines have to be very emphatic and in the concluding line you are actually creating an opportunity for example you can always say i would welcome the opportunity to discuss these and other qualifications with you now here you are yourself attempting or initiating to create an opportunity for you moreover you can also say uh, if you are interested uh, please contact me on this number but this number should exist this number should respond and conclude by asking for a personal interview and be specific about the interviewer uh, if he or she contacts you and it is always better to end your no uh, letter covering letter on a thank you note as we have done in the case of business letters and mail your letter along with your resume and please select a proper envelope that is also important uh, in case they are not asking it through mails and now for that you have to depend upon the instructions available and when you have done that now is the time that you should uh, get ready for an interview call but before that before you are going to give the final touch it is better to check uh, while applying uh, for a job position so there are certain key uh, points which you should remember such as while writing the letter apply to company values for example in your esteemed organization fine elaborate on the information in your resume let your letter be proofread carefully for any typographical or grammatical errors when you have done that now is the time that you came to draft an effective resume now here you can see is an example of a resume which has been drafted by uh, a student who is actually uh, trying for a job especially uh, one uh, resume that is for an entry level for experienced level people this may be different because their resume will be longer now here you can see a sample of a resume where uh, this nishchai buddhi raja uh, that is actually the name of the boy who has uh, written this uh, resume drafted this resume and now here you see the objective that he has given position in sales or marketing with opportunity for advancement and travel meaning thereby he is giving them the clue that he can travel also Tra he he is not confined to the office job so naturally he becomes he he uh, provides some room to the recruiters and then he is talking about the uh, he is mentioning his academic profile you will find in all these uh, uh, the use of action verbs and then the use of past tense scored 100 percentile completed btech obtained secured now these are the terms which ensure that he has taken extra care to draft this resume and then comes the achievement where uh, even even though he is an entry level uh, job seeker uh, he had uh, to his credit uh, the uh, opportunity of presenting a paper uh, in uh, some conference so he is mentioning that presented a paper on the topic aadhar card data security at iit delhi and received the first prize now here uh, is uh, one more thing uh, that can make him stand out from others and then he also uh, talks about uh, his uh, initiative 
uh, in uh, submitting a project on electrovault in Apogee, a technical fest at Bits Pilani. So, meaning thereby uh, this uh, gentleman uh, has all sorts of qualification which can help him stand out from others. Of course, others may also have, but then you are going to attract or to create an opportunity for yourself in the mind of the recruiters and then he also talks about the extracurricular activities. Here he has not mentioned any referees because as per the format, uh, there was no score. Uh, but then if it could have been there, he could have written references on uh, or asked uh, or to be provided uh, up, uh, if asked. And then he gives uh, the personal details where he mentions the exact uh, date of birth, uh, his uh, name of uh, uh, father and all and the languages that he knows and then nationality and then also talks about the hobbies. I hope with this sample resume in mind, you will be able to prepare some more resume also from the point of view of employers, not only uh, for uh, getting a job at the entry level, but also for those who are in jobs and they want to excel or they want uh, to uh, improve their conditions by applying to a better position and for, for an escalated position. I hope with these things in mind and with the uh, resume ready. Uh, with you, you are going to send it. Now, the time has come to wait for the interview. And when the interview call comes, how will you respond to? We will be discussing in the next lecture how to face interviews and how to be successful. Till then, please wait for the call. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.